Today, we're going to be talking about brakes, how they work, why they work, a little bit of science and math behind how they actually function, and I'm going to give you a great secret tip on how to bleed the brakes on the Goldwing because it's not an easy thing to do. Coming up next on Goldwing Docs. Just how complicated can brakes be? You squeeze the lever, you push down the brake pedal, the bike comes to a stop. Yes, there's brake fluid in there and, and some kind of pistons and so on, but how does it actually work? Two main components of the brake system. One is our brake lever here and what's called the master cylinder. If we squeeze this here, what we have here is the slave cylinder. This actually consists of two cylinders, each one with a piston. And when we squeeze that lever, those pistons push out against a brake pad, which then exerts pressure on either side of this rotor. So the wheel is turning, we push the brake lever, the brake lever squeezes the pads against this rotor, and the bike slows down. Let's give that a try. Even pressing as hard as I can with my fingers, it takes a good half rotation to stop this wheel. Yet when I do it with the lever, I can stop it almost instantly. So clearly something is happening in between when I squeeze this lever here and how it squeezes the brake rotor down below on the wheel because the wheel comes to an instant stop just when I squeeze this gently. All right, let's look at a simulation of the brake system. So we have the master cylinder on the left and the slave cylinder down on the wheel on the right. I've connected the two together with a hose. So as you can see, if you push together the two cylinders, the pistons in the cylinders, it actually compresses the air inside there. So what we actually have here is how a shock works. We've got compression of the air bound, rebounding back out. So obviously we need a fluid. Here I'm using root beer just to display it. So you can see when I compress the piston at the wheel, the slave piston pushes out. Now after you've let go of the brake lever, as the wheel rotates, the brake rotor run out, which is basically a tiny little bit of left and right movement as the wheel turns, pushes back on the brake pads, which retracts the slave cylinders just ever so slightly. Remember, it's only a t moving a fraction of a millimeter, and that pushes the fluid back up and into the reservoir. Notice the master cylinder is a much smaller diameter, so I'm actually moving 20 milliliters of fluid here, and the piston moves three inches. However, the same 20 millimeters of fluid on this side moves just about a half of an inch. If we look at the diameters, the master cylinder is only three quarters of an inch, whereas the slave cylinder is a full inch in diameter. This is where the mechanical advantage comes from. Because the area covered by the piston is so much smaller in the master and so much larger in the slave, it takes the same amount of fluid to move the master a large amount and the slave a small amount. This gives us mechanical advantage. It also means it's much easier to push in the master cylinder with a smaller diameter, causes the slave cylinder to push out with a lot more force. That's mechanical advantage. Now you can see it works both ways. I can push and pull on the master cylinder and the slave cylinder will both push and pull in and out the same way. This is exactly how large heavy equipment works. It has hydraulic pumps that push and pull the fluid and cause the cylinder to move in and out, causing motion in the machinery. Now you'll notice I can't actually compress the fluid like I could with the air. However, when there's air bubbles in the fluid, I can actually compress them. If I push both the master and the slave at the same time, you can see the bubbles get smaller as the air gets compressed. So let's have a look at the lever. Anyone who has ridden motorcycles for any amount of time gets a pretty good feel for just how much pressure to apply to a brake lever to get the bike to stop. So what I did is I took a luggage scale and I put it on my brake lever at about the midpoint where my hand connects. And then I did some practice pulls. I did some pulls just as I would expect in everyday riding and it measured between 20 and 30 pounds of pressure. A panic stop, I was closer to 40, 45 pounds, and I could even get upwards of 50 pounds if I really squeezed hard. But that's the exception, not the rule. So we'll go with, say, 20 to 20, 30 pounds. Let's say 30 pounds, because that's a fairly good pull. 
The first thing we notice is we have a lever. Yes, it's a brake lever, but in the world of physics, this is known as a lever that does actual work. So we have a pivot here, and then we have an arm here, and then we have another arm here. So attached to the brake lever, we have the master cylinder. There's a piston inside there, just like in our example, where we saw the piston pushing in and out of the cylinder. Here's the brake line fitting that then runs down to the front brakes. Here's the brake reservoir full of hydraulic fluid. That's our root beer. And here's the head of the piston that gets pushed by the lever. As you can see, as I pull the lever, it pushes that piston inward. That's the head of the piston, and it has a rubber surround around it to keep dust out. Now here's the secret sauce. Here's the brake lever. Obviously this is a pivot and this is a lever, but in the world of physics, levers perform a function. So let's measure from this pivot right here to where my hand goes is usually about 140 millimeters. Now let's measure from the center of the piston to that pivot. About 23 millimeters. So because we have a lever here, it gives us a mechanical advantage. If we take 140 millimeters divided by 23 millimeters, that gives us a six to one ratio. So if I apply 30 pounds force right here at, at the 140 millimeter arm of this lever, that actually is exerting 180 pounds of pressure inward on that piston, but we're only getting started. So looking at the brake lever, uh, hang on a second. Have you subscribed to this channel yet? If not, click subscribe down below and click that little bell as well so you get notified of all our new videos. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, now we have the mechanical advantage afforded us by the lever, as well as the mechanical advantage afforded us by the hydraulic cylinder bore difference. Let's do some math. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. The master cylinder dimension on the gold wing is 12.6 millimeters. The, the dimension of the slave cylinders is 30.3 millimeters. However, there's two of them because there's two pistons that push on that pad. So we have a total of 60.6 millimeters. Now we can't go by the diameter. We actually have to go by the area of the piston to work out our mechanical advantage. So if we divide this by two, we get a radius of 6.3. Using math, <laughs> we do pi r squared. That gives us an, a total area of 124.7 millimeters on the face of this piston pushing in. The slave with its two pistons has a total surface area of 2,884 millimeters. If we divide the 2,884 by the 124.7, we get a ratio of 23.1. That means if we were to push this one in 23.1 millimeters, down at the brake, it only pushes out one millimeter. That's a tremendous mechanical advantage. We already know that when I pull on this lever with 30 pounds of pressure, it pushes inward on the piston of that master cylinder with 180 pounds of pressure. Now, if we take that 180, multiply it by our mechanical advantage from the hydraulic system of 23.1, we get a total of 4,158 pounds of force being pushed in on that brake rotor. No wonder I couldn't stop it with my hand. That's over two tons of pressure. Every time I do 30 pounds of pressure right here, I'm exerting two tons of pressure on that front brake rotor. Okay, so I'm sitting here editing this video and I realize my math is totally off. I added together the diameters of the slave pistons before I calculated the area. What I should have done is calculated the area of each piston and then added the two areas together. If I had done that, the slave area would have been 1,414 millimeters squared rather than 2,884, pretty much half. Uh, and so then instead of a ratio of 23 to one, it would have been 11 and a half to one. So therefore, if I apply 30 pounds to the lever and 180 pounds to the master piston, instead of 4,158 pounds applied to the either side of the rotor, it's actually only 2,070. So it's still a ton of pressure, literally a ton of pressure. So when I squeeze that 30 pounds on the lever, I'm putting a ton, 2,070 pounds of pressure on the, on the brake rotor. So the argument is still valid, valid. It's still explaining exactly what's going on, but my math was a little bit off, but you get the idea. All right, back to the program. So you changed your brakes, you changed the fluid, you bled your brakes, but you still got spongy brakes and, and there you pull it and it's it, it goes to the, the grip and you, your brakes are really spongy. Goldwings are famous for this. 
The problem is you've got air trapped in the lines. Just like you saw when I pushed those two cylinders together and the bubbles are squeezing, those bubbles compress. The hydraulic fluid doesn't, so what you're doing is you're compressing the bubbles. We gotta get those bubbles out of there. The problem is there's so many tiny little nooks and crannies in there, it makes it really hard for those bubbles to migrate their way up into the reservoir. So here's the trick. Take a bungee cord, you wanna pump up your brakes a few times, hook a bungee cord around the lever, and while you hold that lever tight, wrap it around a few times, and then hook it on there. Leave it like that overnight. So what happens is those bubbles are now compressed into their tiny, and because they're tiny, they can now work their way through all the little nooks and crannies and orifices and whatnot, all the way up into your breaker reservoir. So leave it like that overnight, and the next morning you come down, undo this, and you'll have nice, hard, solid brakes with no air in your system. Well, I hope you liked what you saw here today and it's of some educational value to you. Maybe you learned something new. If you liked what you saw here today and you'd like to see more videos like it, don't forget to click like and subscribe down below and you'll get notified every time we post a new one of these videos. Thanks for watching.